for today's episode, I want to talk about one of my newly founded hacks for burning those extra calories, especially while you're at home or watching TV and no, it's not a treadmill. Using this whoop tracker has grown on me more and more for the info it's giving and just proves all the different theories as well. I talk about all the time as you get better at something, you need to shock the body more, do things differently, or you're not going to burn those extra calories. You'll actually see the calories start going down because your body gets more efficient at it. So if you can find something that shocks your body all the time, you could have this thing at home. This could be a game changer like what I'm seeing right now. So if you're interested in what I've been doing, stay tuned. Real quick, is losing weight after 40 while still enjoying your social life a challenge? Well, you're not alone because that's pretty much everybody. On the Over 40 Fitness Hacks podcast, I share insights from my 15 plus years as a personal trainer and gym owner, helping people like you strike the right balance. For those ready to take action, please sign up for my online personal training program on my website or through the link in the show notes. Together, we'll design a plan that fits your lifestyle and helps you achieve your goals without sacrificing the fun. And remember, everyone is different. We will find a program that works for you. So one of the biggest things I've been enjoying and doing is rucking, which is basically walking at a fast pace, either on flat ground or uphill. We got a lot of hills here in San Diego, Inland County. And I grab my 10 pound weight vest and just go walking everywhere. You're getting a more intense experience, shocking the body with that weight vest and also going fast and up those hills and just overall a feel good experience. But just like I talk about on my show all the time, doing something consistently and being good at it actually starts working against you in a way. Meaning for the same hike I was doing outside my house, wearing my weight vest, going at a quick pace, used to burn 150 to 180 calories. I've been doing it every single week for like the last four or five months. And now I'm burning 95 calories was the last one I just did, which was insane because that hike going up that incline was literally the worst thing I did that day. Took the most out of me. Felt like I burned 600 calories. I was so gassed. Yet to come home to find that I burned 95 calories. And it makes sense. So you're going at a smooth gait. It's not like you're running, jumping, swimming. It's just this nice smooth pace. So it's just your lungs that are getting worked. And you know, that weight vest does feel heavy, and I am wearing a hoodie over it, too, to get that temperature up, too, which helps. But like I said, once you do something enough times, you'll start seeing that intensity and the calories going down because you're just getting better at it. It's like people working out on the treadmill before they start their workout. All of those components start going down, which is a good thing. Your body is getting used to it. You're getting more in shape. But the problem is if you're not cutting calories to go with that and you need more calorie expenditure you're going to have to start shocking the body and doing something different. That's why if, if you have the time and money, you can go do a Pilates class, a boxing class, swimming. But a lot of us have a hard time going to new things, not just for money-wise, but just going to a new location. You know, I hate going to new places. I like my local gym. I like routines. So for me, it's more of what can I do at home? So for a lot of you that have been listening to my podcast show, I have a rebounder or small trampoline. And you know, I had a guest on my show, Steve Carver, episode 408. If you want to go back and listen to that, all the science behind you know, rebounding, how it shocks the body, how you burn more calories, how it's safer for your joints and back. And that was really the main component for me, having an L5S1 injury and it being able to run and sprint in place without pain and getting all the benefits. So what I've been using that for is once a week, I try to go intervals of 30 seconds, high intensity with a 30 second break of just sprinting in place. And so after doing it for a long time, obviously I'm burning less and less calories, right? So I've you know, put on the weight fast. I've got three pound, five pound weights in my hands. And then also putting a band around my knees. And at the very end, I started putting an oxygen deprivation mask on there just to torture myself to make it even worse. And it helps. And over time, you start seeing the decline in calorie burn. My main goal for that though, Doing this uh, sprinting in place is not just to burn calories, it's to boost my mitochondria. And when you stress your body out at a high intensity level with a little bit of rest and you keep repeating that, and I just came up with 15 minutes because I just don't want to do more than 15 minutes of that, or you're building back up your mitochondrial count in your body, which will help you be youthful. It'll help you burn more fat in the long run. So there's a whole pl plethora of reasons to do that. So lately, 
instead of uh, focusing on rucking or walking everywhere because of this low calorie count I'm seeing, I'm doing more rebounding for time. So consistent jumping, jumping in place, very casual, not trying to make a workout out of it, just lightly rebounding, just doing different stuff with my feet, kicking out sideways or doing a little bit of high knees, nothing that is anything close to the high intensity running in place I was doing. Just having fun. And I've been watching Ultimate Fighter shows because there's a million episodes and they're a half hour long. So I just do this rebounding for fun, watching TV like anyone would that has a treadmill at home. However, the calories being burned from doing this rebounding and check out episode 408 because it's all the science behind it and why it burns more calories than anything else. And it's 100% true now that I'm tracking this on my Whoop. The consistent rebounding for a half hour, no stopping. I'm burning around 400 calories and I don't even think I break a sweat. Yet I'm going rucking up this hill, burning 95 calories. I feel like death. I'm sweating everywhere. I can't breathe. My body's destroyed. It's just insane because you're using all your muscles when you're rebounding. Whether it feels like it or not, your muscles are absorbing that shock, even though it feels like the trampoline's helping you doing this jumping. And shocking the body is how you win. So simple science, activating every muscle in your legs and probably some through your core and upper body, even though it doesn't feel like it. But the results don't lie. I'm wearing the tracker. I'm seeing the progress. Since I've been doing this, I have also seen the more I'm getting used to this. Now, the less calories I'm burning, I'm having to go a little bit longer to hit that 400 calories. So I'm doing the same thing. Throwing away vests. Put on some three pound, uh, five pound weights in my hands. I just recently put the oxygen mask on that to make it harder. And boom, pulls me right back up to that 400 calories for the 30 minutes. But I'm telling you, over time, that's going to start getting diminished. But hopefully it doesn't ever get worse than a 300 calorie burn, which I'll take. And with this, because how fun it is and I'm watching television while I'm doing it, this has now become a seven day a week deal. And I'm burning an extra 400 calories every single night. And my ultimate goal is hitting 3,000 calories per day burned so I can continue on my trek to the, you know, single digit body fat effectively. So I thought I'd just share that. It's really hard to you know, try different things without using like a fitness tracker to see how you're doing. So you have to go with what people are saying online. If you don't want to buy one, that's okay. But I'm telling you so far, jumping on the rebounder has put up the most numbers. Walking and working out barely move the needle, at least for the half hour I'm doing it. I'm telling you, you do something new like yoga or Pilates. If you're not accustomed to that, you're going to burn a lot of calories. My wife goes and does hot yoga. And at the very beginning, she was burning like 450 calories. And now it's down to like 300, 350. So it's just showing that you, know, you get used to it. So just try out different things. And you know, swimming has got to be on the top of the list as well. But I just think it's so boring. I can't sit there and tread water or swim. You know, it's just not me. So find something that works for you. And also the convenience of it being at home is huge. I think I'll end it with that. And I'll put the uh, rebounder that I use in my show notes. There is a cheaper one that's on Amazon that's probably burns just as many calories. The only thing, if you listen to that episode 408 with Steve Carver, he mentions that his rebounder takes 75% of the shock to your joints and spine off the body where a normal trampoline probably is about 50%. So if you're someone who doesn't have too many injuries, it's probably better to do the Amazon one. But if you want to spend the extra money and get a more quality one, I'll put that in the show notes. And as always, for anyone out there who needs a little help, get pointed in the right direction, I always do a free 15-minute Zoom consultation. The link to schedule that's in my show notes. I always love chatting with members of my audience to see if I can't help you. And then I have services after that if you want to continue. So thanks for listening, and I'll catch you on the next one.